Hello 3D printing and electronics friends. Today on the BB3D channel we'll learn how to use this little LCD screen with an Arduino Uno. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing and electronics related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're back with another Get Started in Electronics episode, and this time we're going to be learning how to use this little 16 character by 2 line LCD display with the UNO. In this series, we're using the Elegoo Super Starter Kit for UNO. This is a nice, affordable little kit that has Elegoo's version of the Arduino UNO board, a breadboard to build the projects on, and a whole bunch of electronic components, sensors, modules, and connecting wires. And there's a link in the description if you're interested. In previous projects that generated output, we used the serial monitor window and the Arduino IDE to see the information that the UNO board was sending back to us. And that's great, but sometimes you want to have a project that's portable or self-contained, but you still want it to be able to give you information. And for that, you need some kind of a display device. And that's where this little LCD screen comes in. I think everyone knows what LEDs are. They're light emitting diodes, but LCDs are liquid crystal displays. And the way they work is kind of cool. They don't emit light to generate images. They block it or they let it pass. It kind of depends on the situation. The very short version of this is that a layer of liquid crystal goo is sandwiched between two pieces of glass. The glass has clear electrodes in the shape of the thing to be displayed. On dot matrix displays like this one, the electrodes are the little square pixels that comprise each character position's 5x8 pixel grid. Now this LCD has two lines of 16 characters each, so that's 2 times 16 times 5 times 8. That's over 1,200 little tiny squares. Now there's a plastic polarizing filter on top of the top layer of glass, and when current is passed through the electrodes, the liquid crystals in between them will align in such a way to allow light to pass, or block it, depending on the orientation of the polarizer. I've got a link in the description to a Wikipedia article if you're interested in learning more about LCDs. But if you're not, that's okay too. Sometimes you just want to make something and not worry about how each little component works. But first, let's get everything connected, and then we'll load the code for the project. And we're going to use the code that comes with the Elegoo kit for this, which in the current version of their downloadable stuff is Part 2, Lesson 13, LCD Display. And when we get to that point, I'll highlight what the code's doing so you can see what makes it work. For this project, in addition to a USB cable and a computer running the Arduino IDE, we're going to need this LCD module, and we're going to need the 10K ohm potentiometer, and we're going to need some of the connecting wires. We'll also need the UNO board and the breadboard. I've got the UNO and the breadboard mounted to this project tray that I designed and 3D printed. If you have a 3D printer or you know someone who does, you can print one too. The file is free to download and you can find a link to it in the description. So the LCD module included in the kit has a pin header with a bunch of pins. Each one is labeled with its function. There are power and ground pins, control pins, and data pins. If you look at the schematic, you can see all the connections. There's one error though. It shows that we should use the 3.3 volt pin to power the project, but the screen needs 5 volts. If you use the 3.3 volt pin, the screen will be glitchy and it won't work right. In total, there are about 12 different connections that need to be made to the LCD module, and there's also a potentiometer that we need to connect so we can adjust the screen's contrast. It sounds like a lot, but don't worry. I'll break it down into logical groups so it's easy to wire up. I like color coding the connections, so power and ground follow the standard convention of red for power and black for ground. As for the rest, I'm going to use green for the screen contrast, white for the control signals, and orange for the data signals. Color coding the connections makes it easier to troubleshoot when something isn't right, or if a wire gets pulled out accidentally. So first, let's plug the LCD module into the breadboard. Then let's connect the ground pin from the UNO to the minus rail. 
and we'll connect the 5 volt pin from the UNO to the plus rail. We also need to connect the 10k ohm potentiometer from the kit. I plugged it in so the side with two pins is facing the power and ground rails and the third pin is on the other side of the divider that runs through the middle of the breadboard. Connect one of the two pins on this side to the power rail and the other pin to the ground rail. Then connect the third pin to the V0 pin on the LCD. This provides the contrast control for the LCD. Let's finish up the ground rail connections. Connect the following LCD pins to ground. VSS, R slash W, and K. Then let's finish up the power rail connections. Connect the following LCD pins to the 5 volt rail. VDD, and A. Next, we'll connect the control pins on the LCD to the UNO. Connect the LCD's RS pin to pin 7 on the UNO. Then, connect the LCD's E pin to pin 8 on the UNO. Now, we're almost done. We just need to connect four data lines. Connect the LCD's D4 pin to pin 9 on the UNO. Connect the LCD's D5 pin to pin 10 on the UNO. Then the LCD's D6 pin to pin 11 on the UNO, and the LCD's D7 pin to pin 12 on the UNO. And that's it for the hardware connections. Now it's time to work on the code, and as I mentioned at the start, we're going to use the code that's included in the current versions of Elegoo's downloadable materials for this kit. There's a link in the description if you don't have it. The file is helloworld.ino, so I'm going to double click that to open the code in the Arduino IDE. There's a big comment section at the beginning of the code, and this part of it describes the wiring, which we've already done. This is how the code expects the LCD to be connected to the UNO in order to work. Scrolling down, we can see that this project uses a code library to make talking to the LCD a lot easier, and in the Arduino IDE version 1.8.13, that library is already installed. If you want to confirm that it's installed in your version of the Arduino IDE, click Tools, then select Manage Libraries. In the Library Manager window, search for Liquid Crystal. The one we need is this one by Adafruit, and as you see here, it's already installed. If it isn't installed on yours, there will be an Install button, and you can click it to install it. So, here, the code is initializing the Liquid Crystal library with the pin numbers described above. This way, the library knows how the LCD is connected, and with that information, the library can control the LCD. Here, in the Setup function, the code is telling the library that we're using a 16-character by 2-line LCD module. And here, it's telling the library to print the message, Hello World, on the LCD. Then, down in the loop function, which runs forever, the code is setting the cursor position to the first column of the second line. The LCD library uses a zero-based index, which means that the first line is line 0 and the first column is column 0. So, by setting the cursor to column 0 and line 1, the next LCD print command is going to start at the first column of the second line. This is one of those things that can seem weird the first time you encounter it, but it's extremely common in programming, and you get used to it after a while. Then, the code is telling the library to print to the LCD, and the thing it wants to print is the number of seconds since the UNO powered up. It gets this from millis, which contains the number of milliseconds since the UNO powered up, and it divides that value by 1000 to get the number of seconds. So every time through the loop, the code sets the cursor position to the first column of the second line, and then prints the number of seconds since startup. It's a very simple program, but it does demonstrate that you can easily write to the LCD module. 
So with the UNO plugged into the computer, let's make sure the correct board and port are selected. Click Tools, point to Boards, and make sure Arduino UNO is selected. Then click Tools, point to Port, and make sure the port tagged with Arduino UNO is selected. Now let's click the Upload button here to compile the sketch and send it to the UNO. And there we go! Hello World is on the screen and the seconds are starting to count up. If you don't see anything on the screen at first, try adjusting the contrast with the potentiometer. And if you still don't see anything, double check your wiring. If you want to personalize the message, you can change the LCD print command in Setup and upload it again to the UNO. I'll highlight the Hello World text and change it to Hello Brian. Now just remember, you only have 16 characters for that line though. So now that we can get some information out of the UNO and onto the LCD screen, what's next? Well, remember a few episodes ago when we used that DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor? You could combine that project with this one so that you wouldn't need to have it tethered to the computer to display the humidity and temperature. Or combine this project with the ultrasonic distance ometer to get a vaguely accurate distance measurement. There are a lot of different things that you could do. If you have an idea for a way to use the LCD screen, share it down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you'd do with this. Well, 3D printing and electronics, friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go and print something cool to an LCD screen. Mm. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. Please check out some of my other videos. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.